All right, so let's today model distress. And as we agreed last time, the first thing that we need to do is to start by file and we will say new model. So new model will open. And first thing that we need to deal with is the unit. So I look at my problem and all the, all the units are ton and meters. So I will pick here ton and meters. So I will find ton force and millimeter and the next is ton force and meter. So this is the first thing when I model structures on SAP 2000, I have to decide on units. So, and then I look if my structure I can grid it like I know that the grid is facing, okay, it's a three, 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 and four. So I will go to grid only. And then you will find it asking for the number of grids in X direction and Y direction. So what is the, the, X, the coordinate of our, my structure? Is it an XY or XZ or ZX or ZY? XZ, XZ right? It's going up there. Like if I have a truss, it's, it has this X and then it goes up, which is D. Okay, so I have how many grids that I can use here in X direction? Five, right? Because I calculate one, two, three, four, five. So I divide it to five grids. And how many grids in the Y direction? Just one, right? Because there is no two. It just start with one and then nothing. How about Z direction? Two, because I only have two levels. So I will start with two. How is, uh, like, what is the spacing in X direction? Three, because I have three, three meters. And what is the spacing in the Z direction? I will put four. And then Y direction, it doesn't matter because I only have one. When I say, okay, it will open two windows, XY plane and 3D plane. So as I, as I told you last time, you can choose whatever mood that you would like to, it will help you to perform faster. Some people only use the whole screen and Z direction or an X Z direction. And some people would like 3D and a 2D dimension. Okay, here I will change the screen from XY plane to XZ plane, because this is the drawing area that I want. And the second thing, after I finish the grid, I start the definition. I define the material. I define the cross section. You define everything that you have about your structure. Okay. So once you are done with the grids, you go to uh, define and start with materials. You go to your materials. If you're trust from concrete, so you define a concrete material. If you trust from a steel, you define a steel material. And then you go, you can modify these materials and or you can add a copy of them. So if I add a copy of them, I can say, that my material, for example, is RC for 4,500. And then you start to put that the, the material grade is 45. And then you start to put the weight per unit volume, the modulus of elasticity, the Poisson ratio, and everything about your material. And once you are done, you say, okay, you will find your material here. Similarly, the steel. There is some steel of a high strength, there is low strength, so you can add a copy and you keep it changing. You can call it steel, uh, for example, grade 60, and you keep it changing the modulus of elasticity and everything about the yield stresses, tensile stresses, because you know the steel curve, it goes to yield and then it goes to alternate. So it has the components, the yield and the alternate, all right? And then you say, okay, so you'll find all your material. Uh, usually in big project like high rise building, as I told last time, Sometimes we have the concrete for the columns is made from different materials from the slabs because the columns has a lots of normal force. So you need a, a very high, uh, like uh, uh, the, uh, the, the resistance of the concrete needs to be much higher, but for the slab, you don't need this resistance. So it will be a waste of money. So you use low grade or low strength con concrete for slabs, but high strength concrete uh, for the uh, columns. So you need to define these two uh, uh, concrete material. And once you are done, you hit OK. And I'm done with defining the materials. How about the cross sections? So if this truss has different cross sections, like let's assume that this uh, bottom cord has I beams, but the, uh, the, uh, like the diagonal elements have uh, uh, angles. Okay, so you need to define the I beams and define the angles. So you will go here at define and then sections and then say frame sections. 
and you add new property. Some companies have their own properties and they have a file and they import this file, like you, they import a new IP. But what I want to do, I just like add a new property that exists in SAP 2000. And then I go either steel or concrete or whatever your cross section. So if it's a steel, I go with IP. And then you define the height of the beam, the flange width, the flange thickness, the width thickness, the bottom flange width, the bottom flange thickness, and everything about your IP. And there is actually, if you guys take a steel structure design, there is Isaac. You can go into Isaac and identify the uh, dimension of your IP. And you define what material that you want to use for this I beam. And once you are done, you say okay, and you will find your cross section here. If you have a concrete section, you will add new property and you change it from steel to concrete. And then you choose whatever cross section that you have. I will say rectangle, and I can say rectangle 30. Let's say that says 60 by. 30. So I will say that the depth is 0.6 meter and the depth is 0.3 meter. Uh, sorry, the width is 0.3 meter. And I will check a concrete material. And finally, after I'm done, I say, okay, I'll find my cross section is out. So this is how I define cross sections. So define, I define cross sections, I define materials, then you define load patterns. Load patterns here is very important because I have different pattern. One of them is live and one of them is dead. So I come here at load pattern and I found it that already been defined. And as I told you last time, I need to change one from one to be zero so that the, the software doesn't account for the self weight of the member because the self weight of the members is not included in the structure. If I'm, filling, if I'm giving you this as a problem in your final exam, you will not calculate the self weight of the structure. You will calculate the, the reaction due to this load. And actually what we do is we lump sum the loads of this structure in these joints and these concentrated loads. So for now I will put the bed load zero, but it, it, is not been, it hasn't been exchanged. So I have to say modify load pattern. So if you put one here and say modify, it will be modified to one, but I need it to be zero. So I will make it zero. And then I will add another one. I will call it live. And I will put zero in self weight because live load doesn't have self weight, and I will add new load pattern. So I have two dead and live, and I will say okay. So I define frames. I define as that. Oh, oh uh, I forgot to change this from. I said it's live, but actually the the software will not recognize it as a live. Will recognize it as a dead because I kept it the type dead here. Actually, you can name whatever load that you want. Yeah, I can say this load is Omar, okay? And it will be dead as well. So live, I need to go here and change it to be live. So I made a mistake and I will say modify. So it will be modified to be live. So be careful about this. You need to change the type of the load. If it's earthquake, so you put quake. If it's wind, you put wind. And finally, once you are done, you will say, okay. So here I define everything. The next thing is I have to draw my structure. So let's draw my structure. So I will go to the draw and then you will have whatever members that you will pick. So right now I'm talking about frame members because truss needs a frame members. But if I'm talking about slab, so I will check fully area. I need an area element. This area could be shell, could be plate, could be membrane, whatever the area members that we discussed the last time. But right now I need a frame member. So I pick frame and, and they will open a little box and they will ask you what is the cross section for this member? So I will say this cross section is F section one, which was the steel cross section. Then I will start to draw using my grids. So I will have here, this point, and I can go to this point, then this point here. And actually you can draw this as a one member like that. And then you come here and draw this. And if you want to start, like if I click here, but I want to come here and start from, if I, because if I did this, I will make something like this, but I want to draw the member in the middle. How can I do it? You click outside with, with a right click like this. So 
you will be still in the drawing mode, but you need to start from verse. So you will start from here to here. Yeah, all of them has the same properties because I said there is no change of properties in my problem, but if they have different properties, so you will have to make different section for each member that you are drawing. So for example, I will delete these two members. And I will draw one more time. And I will pick this two member from different properties like concrete. But for my example, I need them, they have the same properties. So this one, and then I click outside and I draw this one. Right now I drew my structure, but I didn't do the end conditions, the hinge and roller. So I click the joints that I need to restrain them. So I will click on this joint and I know that this joint has hinge. So I will assign joint restrain at this joint and the type of restraint is hinge. So I will click on hinge and say, okay, right? All right, so the next thing I select this joint and I say assign joint, restrain, and then I will pick roller. And then I will say, okay. So I will have roller on the other joints. And here's how it shows the structure. So right now I draw the geometry, but this geometry doesn't have any loads. So the next step is to assign loads on this geometry. All right, so I pick the joint that I want to assign load at. So for example, let's pick this joint and this joint, both of them has the same load, three ton. So I will assign joint here is to tweak the geometry. But if you want to assign joint loads, you will find joint loads down there. So you'll assign joint loads and then you will say forces because we, we have forces, not displacement. And then the type of these loads are dead loads. So I will make sure that I have dead activated and it's a global direction and it should be in the Z. And should I put negative or positive three? Negative, so that it goes down and I will say, okay. So I will have three going down and I will click on this joint. And then I will say assign joint loads forces. And it's dead as well, but right now it's a five ton. So I'll change this from negative three to negative five. And I will say, okay, then I will see the five ton shows up here. So right now I'm done with the dead load. What is next? Live load. I know this joint has another live load. So I will click on this joint and then I will assign joint loads forces, but make sure you activate live load. And then right now there is no live load in the Z direction. So I have to make sure that this is zero. And I know it's in X direction. Is it positive or negative? So yeah, it will be five and I will say, okay. So right now what would happen? So you will see that all the loads disappeared except the five. So what happened to the other two? Oh, that the dead loads, what happened to them? They disappeared. And just like the, the software doesn't show the load because it only can show us a one load better than the time. Like it says, I'm only showing the joint loads due to live load. If you want to show that the loads are from the dead loads, so you will come from you will come here at display. And then you will show load assignment on joints. And then you change it from, you will keep it dead and you will say apply. So you will be able to see the dead load. If you want to show the live loads, you will say live load. And then, so you only can see one type of load better than another time, okay? So right now I did all the loads. My, my structure is ready to be run and get results. But actually there's some things that we didn't do to this structure. But let's see what will happen if we run out structure like this and see what will happen in the results and how we can fix it. But this is not complete yet. So let's run our structure. So if you want to run, let's save it first. So I will save my structure and I will call it trust to save. And then let's run our structure. As I told you last time, there will be a load case that's called modal. So SAB is running a default load case that's called modal analysis. It is used for earthquake analysis. We don't want to run it. It takes lots of time. So we will say, don't run this case. And they will only be running dead and live. 
and then we will say run now. So right now, my structure analysis is done. And here's the deformed shape of the truss under the dead load. If you want to switch to the deformed shape due to other load patterns like live, you will go to display and deformed shape and then pick live and then say, okay. So this is due to the live load only, okay? All right, so this is the deformed shape. Let's show the normal force in the trusses. We all know that the trusses have only normal force, right? Okay, so let's display results forces on frames because I want to show the forces on the frames or the cables or the tendons, but I only have frames right now. And I want to show due to did only, and I want to show axial force. And when I say, okay, so this is the axial force due to the dead load. If you want to show the axial load due to live load, so you will say live axial force, and then you will say, okay, so this is the axial force due to the live load. Basically, if this is a truss and, and the software understand this as a truss, what is the value of the shear and moment on members? Okay, let's see what is the value of shear and moment. So here frames, okay, if I want to display the moment, I show moment M22 or 33. Why 33? Because last time we said that axis three is going this way and the moment showed about three direction. And two, X2 is going this way and this is where the shear two, two. So this is three and this is two. And the moment is always about M, about three and the shear is always in the direction of two. So if I want to show the shear force, I will say shear two, two, and then I will say, okay. So the truss has a shear force. That means that my problem or the software didn't understand this truss as a truss. It understand it as a frame, okay? Similarly, if you display this, the moment, you will find some moment on this truss. So how can I solve this? There is a way to solve it. That means like, your software understand that this joint has moment. It takes moment. It is not an intermediate hinge. So you need to define all these joints as an intermediate hinge so that all the moment at these points can be zero. So let's see how can we do this. I have to unlock my model. So you will come here, unlock your model, and you will say, okay. So right now all the results will be gone and re-iterate working on your model. So I need to release all the models, all the, all the moments at these hinges. So I click here and I pick all the joints at this location. And then I will say assign frame. And then you will find something is called releases and partial fixity. You guys remember last time when we talked about partial fixity, like when you have a rotational spring. So it's easy, it's a fixed or it's a hinge or something in between. So this will allows you to identify, is it the stiffness, the rotational stiffness of the joint is infinity or it's a zero. So in the trusses, it's a zero because there is no stiffness in it. It's intermediate hinge. Like last time or in the first lecture, we said that you might have a structure like this. So the moment here is zero, but here you have a moment As a load, but if you have a, a rotational spring with k, it has a moment in between these two, in between zero and the value here. So here it asks you what is the stiffness of the spring? What is the stiffness of this joint to resist moment? So what I will say here, I will say release and partial fixity, and I need the software to release moment M33 and make the fixity or the or the rotational stiffness at these joints is equal to zero. But if there is a rotational spring and you know that the stiffness of this spring is a 100 ton meter per radian, so you put 100 ton meter per radian. So, but here I know that all the moments are zero. These hinges has zero rotational stiffness. And then I will say, okay. So right now what happened? The software releases all the moments. So what he did right now, he didn't cut that exactly. Let me show you. But there's still something. This member, because I know it one time, like 
that started here and ended here. So it only recognized that there's an intermediate thing here and here, but didn't recognize that there's an intermediate thing that needs specification. So I have to cut this member into pieces at these points. So what I will do, let's show undeformed shape. I will pick this member and I will pick these joints and I will ask the software to edit this member and edit the line and divide this frame and break it at the intersection with the selected joints that I picked. And then I will say, okay. So right now, if you click at any of these one, it will be a segment. These four segments, I will go assign frames, release, and I will release the moments at, at these members. So right now, your structure will be like this. So I released all the moments at all these joints. So let's rerun this structure and see how the results look like. So I will run this structure and say run now. So the last problem, the software identified my structure as a frame. Right now, the software identified the structure as a truss. And this will be obvious when I show display, show forces, and let's show forces due to that. And let's show the moment. And I say apply. There is nothing. I say shear, apply. There is no, so that means all the shear, all the moments is zero. But when I say axial force, axial force will, that's right now, this is a truss, not a frame. When I released all uh, the moments. Okay, so this is for dead. Uh, if I want to show it for live, live load, it will be something like this. And actually, this is reasonable. So the red, that means that these members are under composition. And actually, this is really because we have a load coming this way. So all these members will be under tension because it's going this way. So it needs to move and it's tension. And these members is getting some composition because this one is resisting the other way. So this is shows how your structure is behaving with respect to the loads that you have. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I want to teach you today is the load cases. So when I want to define, I define load patterns. Load patterns mean load types, dead, live, earthquake, when, last. But what if you want to add dead was live? And that's what happened. Like this structure has dead loads, like the on weight, the flooring. And also we are the live load in this structure all one at a time. So there is some formulas. I think I uploaded this in the last lecture notes. If you, if you guys are familiar with, not sure. Oh yeah. Um, I think I didn't have it here. There is a, a standard that tells you how much loads that you should put in your structures. Like how much dead load, like you will put 1.2 dead load. Like we put like a safety factor <coughs> comes from statistics along with some of the life, like 0.9 the live load or 0.5 the live load plus one. So there's um, seven load cases that you need to consider. Okay, I might write them and give it to you guys next lecture. Or, or you guys are check ASCE 722 or 716, you will find them. So right now, if I want to define like a simple uh, load combination, so I go to define and I define load combinations. So it will ask you to add a new combination. And here I will say combination number one, will be equal to the date load multiplied by 1.5. And I will say add. And the live load multiplied by 1.2. And I will say add. So what happened here, it will run your structure under both dead and live. The dead is multiplied by 1.5 and the live is multiplied by 1.2. So, and both of them is linear submission. Some, some people will take envelope of these two. What is the maximum of these two? Um, the absolute submission, if some load is negative and some is positive, so we'll take the absolute of this and absolute of that and uh, sum them. But we usually do linear submission. And then I will say, okay, and I will find my combination outside. If you have the seven combination from the ASCC 716, you can put the, put the seven. And actually for earthquakes, there is many combination, like you assume that you have earthquake in the X direction, with some in Y and earthquake in Y direction and some in X and earthquake in the vertical direction 
and each one has lots of combinations. So sometimes like the, the load cases can be hundreds of load cases when you have a big project. So this is just an example. And then I will say, okay, and I'll run my analysis. Run now, okay. It says no cases to run, but actually I believe we can show frames due to combination one. Actually, you cannot, you have your structure already run. You run your analysis due to the load cases. You can create combination after you run your model. Right now, I didn't, I didn't have to unlock my model and define load combination and then we run my model again. So right now I have my model, it's run and I just added some combination. So right now I will show the analysis result for the axial force due to combination one. And I will say, okay, so here's it shows that the axial force diagrams here is due to uh, combination number one. So here is the, no, the normal force in this member, the tension is negative 10. Let's see how it was when it was only dead load. When it's dead load, it was negative four. But when we multiply the dead load by 1.5 and the live load by 1.2 for this combination, the axial force will be something like this. And actually let's see the deformed shape. Uh, display show uh, the format shape due to the combination number one. I will say okay. So this, how does the deformed shape look like? Due to the live and the dead at the same time. But um, yeah, it will be something like this due to dead and live. But if we only show the deformed shape due to live load, It will be something like this. So in our next homework, I will ask you to solve using SAT 2000 and solve using the, uh, the energy method, the virtual work and compare between two results. How SAP 2000 results look like and how about your manual solution using virtual work. So uh, you can stop the animation and you can put your cruiser here and see uh, what is the deformation? So it says that you have, U1 is equal to 0 0.004 meter, which is 0 0.04 centimeter. And you have U3, but you don't have uh, UY. Because this is an X and Z analysis, right? It, you don't have any load out of plane, you have U2 out of plane, right? So if you have something here, that means that you put load in the direction. So be careful about the load direction. Sometimes you put them in the y direction, however, they should be in the v direction. If you have one out of lane, this is preferable to be out of lane. Okay. All right. So that's all for now. And uh, next time we will be having another SAP 2000 session and uh, for like one and a half hour. And then we will have our exam for the rest uh, of the class. Okay.